Okay, I'm gonna be in Ephesians. Chapter five. Perhaps the recording is good. Ephesians chapter five. Verse 21. Ephesians 5.21. I'm so excited today. We are finally going to finish chapter 5. That will leave us with one chapter left. It's been a long journey through Ephesians. So, so far um, in our study, we've basically been... Going through chapter 5, of course, since we're finishing it, that makes sense. Last time we were encouraged to uh, walk in a way that pleases God. And Paul sort of ended, he ended his section, if you will, in, in these various exhortations to, to basically walk as children of light, to walk as lights, and in pleasing God. And he ended it with five, ready for this word, participles. It's ING words. So, describing basically these five words as in they are fruits of what the, the light produces in us, or if you will, the spirit. So the, the spirit will produce these works. So when the spirit's working, these five works will be taking place. So that's why he goes on, he says, uh, speaking, that's one of the ING words. So when the spirit is guiding our lives, we'll be speaking to one another in psalms and hymns. It's not saying that you have to. It's saying that these things will just generally take place because of the Spirit's work. Or uh, making melody in your hearts, right? I don't think anybody's going to be doing dishes and singing to the Lord who's not a believer, right? Like, I don't see that happening. Jesus, I just love you. They're not a believer. Like, it doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> unless they're doing it mockingly. Right? Yeah, unless they're doing it mockingly, but... Yeah, so, so Paul lists these five, five uh, action words that takes place when the Spirit is in control of our lives, really. And then, so verse 21 is the final one. And verse 21 acts as a hinged verse. It, it acts as a transitional verse to bring us to the next section. So Paul, Paul sort of springboards off this final action word to, to, to get to the rest of his focus which is going to be really on the household conduct and sort of really submission being the key focus here. Submission. So starting in verse 21, uh, let's go ahead and read it all the way till the end of the chapter. So uh, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are, his mem we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Woo! So what I, I said already, if you are not married, you're going to either want to get married more, or you're going to want to get married less. Yes. After we learn some yes. marriage requirements laid out here in scripture by Paul. So verse 21, we're going to start off with that to give us the springboard for the next um, commandments, if you will. So verse 20, 21 begins the next section and 
Paul begins with the wife. And so this section is sort of can be found as verse, verses 21 through 24 can be seen as wives are to mimic the church's submission. So wives are likened to the church here. They're, the allegory of the wife is the church in this passage. And that's important to understand as we continue through this passage. So we're going to see a lot of different transitions. So today's title, today's message is Husband and Wife, Christ and the Church. Simple title. So verse 21. Uh, submitting to one another in the fear of God. The New King James says God. It depends on what manuscript they use. Some of the texts read Christ. Uh, either way works for me. I think the context screams out it probably reads Christ. But then this would be the only verse in all of Scripture that says to fear Christ. So uh, either way works. I think I mean Christ is God, so it doesn't matter to me. Either way, we're fearing Christ, we're fearing God. Christ has been given all judgment, right, by God the Father anyways. So whatever is the original closest translation, whether it's God or Christ, doesn't matter. And that's why it might be different in some of your Bibles, whether it says God or Christ. Um, so we're submitting to one another in fear of Christ. Uh, something important to point out here is this is the last action word, the last participle, the last ing, and it's submitting. So submitting is going to be something that takes place as the fruit of the light, the fruit of the Spirit, is, is working in us. It's going to be a fruit of the Spirit. It's going to be submitting. And what's interesting here is the word one another uh, does not necessarily mean that every person submits to every person. Even though that is an interpretation, I don't personally believe that that's what it's saying here. I think what's saying here is one to another. Does that make sense? No one another submit to one another it's one to another in other words one person submitting to the other person who's in the appropriate or proper position of authority so let me explain what I mean a little further Revelation 6 4 this is important to set up for uh, the whole focus of this passage Revelation 6 4 says another horse fiery red went out and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth. And that people should kill one another. There's that word, one another. And there was given to him a great sword. So that word literally means one another in the Greek. But it depends how it's used. Here in Revelation, obviously, obviously there's not mutual killing going on. I can't kill you and then you kill me. Like mutually, we shared murder, right? We don't kill each other. So it doesn't literally mean, and they killed each other. Even though that's possible, but that's not what it's talking about. It just means that, that people are just going around killing people in general. So here in Ephesians, it seems like that that's the train of thought with one another, that it's not, I'm submitting to Weston, he's submitting to me. It's you submit to those who are, who are in authority over you. Be submissive to those that are in those positions is really what it's saying. So submit one to the other, one to another, whoever that may be. So in the church, we submit to the leadership, right? Or however that looks like. And so this really sets up the tone for the next verse. But before we get there, what do we submit at in or out of motion? Which, what is our motivation for submission? Fear. Fear. A lot of trans. Does any translation say anything other than fear? Reverence. Yours says reverence? The word reverence... Uh, Mine doesn't even... Uh, yeah, reverence. Reverence. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're, I was reading up on it, and a few of the co both commentaries I'm reading, uh, they, they both agree, and that they hardly agree, that fear is the best translation here. That any other word seems to dumb down the word fear mm -hmm. that is being portrayed. And it doesn't mean that we're, in, we're, we're terrified of Christ. What it means is a healthy respect. A healthy reverence, I guess that's, that's a decent translation, but fear sort of captures the full nuance of the Greek. That there, there is, in a sense, a fear, right? You think of, in the Old Testament, the beginning of wisdom is, is what? Fear of, the Lord. fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord is described in the Bible as, as a willingness to submit under God's rule in your life. Basically obeying His commands. Understanding and acknowledging and living out in your life the fact that he is the judge that is fear of the Lord so out of our out of our fear of the Lord our, our acknowledgement that Christ is the judge 
we submit to one another. In other words, Christ ordained leadership within the church, and we are to submit to that leadership because Christ did it. So we're, we're actually ultimately fearing Christ when we're obeying leadership in the church. So really, we're obeying God. We're, we're submitting to Christ by submitting to leadership. It's, it's really cool to, to think of it that way. It, puts it makes it a lot easier to submit to somebody that way. So verse 22. Now it gets to the wives. The wives are to submit to their husbands as to the Lord. I mean, I'm sure there's a million jokes that could be said about this verse. But I will spare the jokes this time on account of my wife asking me to. <laughs> <laughs> so don't be making jokes. She made a joke too. She's all, why is this thing not recording? That's a funny joke. Oh man. Got the batteries. No, it says no card. I wonder if I'm full. No, it's toast. Whatever. You just have to record it another time. Stand up and feature. Whatever. Put my feet to the video camera, here. stand right here and... Do so, like a whole entire like 127 hours thing and just look into the camera the whole time. I know. So, uh, yeah, she was just making a joke that, hey, you know, it's so funny. I'm not going to be there while you're te teaching about submission. But why submitted to their husbands? And they're like, don't worry, I'll preach it to you. <laughs> when I get home. No, he's uh, joking. He's no, I'm joking about it. <laughs> so the wives are sub to submit to their husbands as to the Lord. So Paul begins with the wife. Fittingly, because submission is the transitional verse. And if it's submission to those who are on proper authority, uh, and the word submitting here is, is sort of like a coming under of the leadership of another. Coming under their authority, their headship. It's, it's a willingness to come under that person's leadership. And so the wives are to willingly come under the God-ordained leadership of the husband in the home. So every married man in the room right now is like, yeah, it's making me want to get married, right? You know? But uh, don't worry, you're going to have your, your instructions, which is a lot worse, because women are likened to the church. Men are likened to Christ. We have quite a bit more responsibility, I'd say. Um, so wait, we'll, uh, I'll beat up the men in a minute. So starting with the women, women submit to their husbands. Wives submit to their husbands. So here, this, this is interesting because people try to say, oh, this is... This is cultural. You know, that our culture is different today. They're, and women and men are equal. Well, that's true. Women and men are equal. Other passages say that. In Christ, there is no Jew, Gentile, woman, or man. Like, we're all the same in Christ. But this isn't a matter of who's equal. This is a matter of ranking as far as, like, not greater than or less than, but strictly just order. Like, in the military. Imagine the military not having rank or order. So you got every single grunt on the military field calling the shots. That's not going to work, right? Like they need somebody being able to call the shots so everybody else follows. And I was talking to my wife actually about this one. And I really think a good picture of this is the, the guy, you know, the, the officer in command in the, in the, in the field of battle. They're, they're in a gunfight. And there's the guy in command. And... Everybody else is supposed to listen to him, come under his authority, probably because he's the most experienced. Maybe he's been in a few battles. He knows the enemy. He studied the, the surrounding area. You know, he, he knows what he's doing. So he's saying, if we go around this building, we can flank him. So he's telling the team, let's go around the building and flank him. And then you get the two guys that are like, no, we don't want to do that. We want to go this way. And so they go that way. And what's going to happen? They're going to get shot, right? Because the, the, the soldier, the sergeant knows what he's doing. He's leading the team, but what's in the team's, what's in the sergeant's mind as he's leading the team? The team's welfare, right? The team's welfare. He, he is concerned about their welfare. And so in the same way, he's not greater than them in any way. They're all equal, and especially on the, on the field of battle. Like, they're all just soldiers. They're all protecting whatever they're protecting, their country or whatever. They're all the same. And in the same terms, husbands and wives are the same. But there is a ranking to promote order. And this goes beyond culture because Paul is liking it to Christ in the church. So it's not just culture. This is church. This is the way it should be for in a Christian marriage. And I just want to point that out. And, and, and I, like at the end, um, it says that as to the Lord. 
we already saw that in general, we're supposed to submit to proper authority as out of fear of Christ. Now, wives are to submit to their husbands as to the Lord. God has given the husband that headship role. And when a wife is submitting to her husband, she's actually abiding in the will of God. So, you know, if a, woman's, if a woman comes up to me, a married woman, and says, what is God's will for my life? I'll say, well, number one, I can tell you, it's to submit to your husband, to be subordinate, to come under his leadership. Does that mean the husband always knows what's best? No. Does that mean the husband has his way all the time? No. Does that mean he slaves his wife? No. It doesn't mean any of those things. It means that she can give her input. It means that they can work together. But what it means is that when big decisions are made and there's not an agreement, the husband's decision should overrule the wife's if they're in disagreement. And that's what promotes order instead of chaos in the home. And generally, I've seen when a husband is properly being a husband, the wife wants him to make decisions. Women actually want men to help him make decisions. I've found that in marriage. In my own life, I've heard this in messages from women on the radio and stuff that, that women actually want their husbands to help them make decisions. It's really remarkable how, how often women will just actually ask a man, hey, what do you think I should do in this situation? It's, it's, women, it's not that they can't make a decision or have the knowledge. It's just there's something about women wanting a man's input to help make a decision. So whatever that means. Verse 23 here is why she is to submit. For he is the head of the wife, as Christ also is head of the church. So he, he, now he brings in the Christ relationship, Christ-church relationship. He is the head of the wife. He is there as the head, just as Christ also is the head. And we've already learned in Ephesians, head implies that Christ is the provider. Not that the husband is necessarily the provider, though he, he technically is. Um, the day he, he is the sustainer. He is the one looking out for the welfare of the church. Christ is. He is, he is the one orchestrating the church. He is the goal of the church. And in similar ways, the husband is to be the head of his wife. Primarily the focus in this verse is just the headship, is that she, he is the leader of the home. And by being a leader, he has a responsibility that we'll see later, how he exercises that headship role. I have a question real quick. Yeah. Can the man be the leader of the house if the woman makes more income than the man? Definitely. My wife makes a lot more money than me. And it's just that uh, your money is the same. It doesn't matter who works. You know, when you're a married couple, you just you have the same bank card, you know. Uh, and so, you know, God just works different ways. He decided to... <coughs> Until she got laid off, my wife made more money, but still we made decisions together and she trusts my decisions when we are coming to a disagreement and she trusts my judgment when we're coming to generally we work together fine but there's been rare occasions where I just kind of have to say hey this is what we have to do you know to like save money like there's a time maybe we got to keep it tight even though it's her money technically right but just making a decision hey we can't do this today we can't go to this restaurant like even small decisions make a big deal and it and and she she willingly says, okay, I, I understand what you're you're trying to look out for our financial welfare right now, and and so I think there's areas where you know my wife definitely reveals her godly character here. Does that help? Mm. So it's a funny question because I um, I guess I would be a good example in the sense that my wife makes more money than me, so uh, a lot more. Uh, so wives are to mimic the church's submission to Christ by submitting to their husbands. So the church submits to Christ. Christ is the head of the church. He himself is the savior of the body. And actually we'll get to that submitting next. Uh, and, and then it says, he himself is the savior of the body. I think the point Paul is saying here is that Christ is the head. And as the head, he enacted the salvation of the body of his wife. So Christ is an initiator. So it's kind of funny how men are the ones that always have to go out on the, on the, on the line, right? Like, like men always like, can I get your number, yo girl? Can you get your, <laughs> get your number? Can you get your digits? Can, no, it's, uh, can I have the number that will communicate us telephonically? Huh? So 
<laughs> in general, men seem to be, <laughs> at least in America, I mean, in other countries, it's the parents. They just, hey, you're marrying this girl, that's it. But in America, it, it seems like it's just how it is where men approach the woman, generally. Not always. And it seems like that that's just what's accepted. It's not common, it, it, though it happens for women, for for women to ask the man to marry, it's usually the man asking the woman. The man is generally the one that says, I love you first. Uh, maybe not, I could be wrong about that. Uh, was he vet the first one? Sometimes, I don't know, I don't want to mention that one, now that I think about it. Uh, <laughs> no, I was actually the first one in my marriage. My wife, before we were married, uh, my wife was waiting for me to say it first, to be the initiator. So women like the initiation. And, and honestly, a leader, leads by what? Example. Example. In other words, the initiation. The, he is the initiator. If God wants us to love him, what did he first do to us? Love us. Love us. God didn't sit back and say, okay, you love me, and when that happens, then I'll love you. He initiated love, and then says, okay, now you love me, now that you know what it looks like. So God is actually the greatest example of, of doing first, requiring after. And in the same way, the husband, when he's requiring things of his wife, should do first. Like, if I want my wife to pray, I should be a man of prayer. If I want my wife to study the Bible, I should study the Bible first as an example. And I'm learning that as I'm about to have a baby. I want to be an example to my son as, as not just a pastoral role when I'm at church, but also at home being the same person. So he sees a congruency, like this is who my dad is. Not at home, he's pastor, and at home, I mean at, at, at church he's pastor, at home he's this guy. I want to be the example in my home. And here, wives, or here Christ is the savior of the body. He initiated the salvation of the church. Verse 24. Therefore, just as the church is subject, subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands and everything. And here Paul brings it to the climax. In the same way that the church is to come under the headship of Christ, so also the wife is to come under the headship of her, of, of her husband. So Christ, so now Paul is talking about two different things with the same intention. And we're going to actually build on that as Paul builds on it really as we go through. But the example is for the wives is the church. In the same way the church should submit to Christ in everything, the woman is to submit to her husband. And that brings up one other point. As verse 22 makes clear, the wives are to, to submit to their husbands as what? As to the Lord. So who is her first priority? The Lord. The Lord. That means, even though Paul says everything, he doesn't literally mean everything. He's assuming the husband is doing his part, and we'll get to in that later. So he's assuming the husband is doing his part as a Christian husband, and so she should submit to him in everything when he's doing his part. When the husband is telling the wife to do something contrary to the word of God, such as uh, going against the commandment, maybe, oh yeah, go ahead and take that, you know, TV right now, we, you know, just grab it. You know, and the wife's like, oh, I should submit, just do it. No. Your first priority is to God. No, I can't do that because that's stealing. So God's higher ranking than you, husband, so he outranks you, so I listen to him first. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So honestly, God is always the ruler, the one making the rules, and the husband is assumed to be following God's rules and really enacting God's rules in the household so that the wife can submit to the husband's rules because the husband's rules are actually God's rules. Does that make sense? <laughs> the chain of command. The chain of command. So that's it on the wives. Simple, easy, submit. I mean, like, not to be, like, submit. But really, that's, that's, that's a very key role for the wife is to understand the headship of her husband.